Oh look, another nice guy is actually a hobo schedule. <laughs> like, I don't like being right. I swear I don't. I'm actually a pretty positive person, but I'm also a realist. Uh, this dude sucks. I do not want to see him crying anymore because it's all B S. Before I get into how much that guy sucks, thanks to the Hollywood Reporter's new expose, uh, I just want to address this comment right here. But I get stuff like this all the time. Anytime I dare to question something, people are like, "Hey, lady, Betty, yeah, you're just a cat lady. You you, you can't find a man." Blah. Despite being happily married to a wonderful man. I am not a killjoy. I am just trying to educate women especially on how dangerous men are and how so many of them because of patriarchy and our own brainwashing are full of <laughs> manipulate us and use us and exploit us and then just lie, lie, lie. They lie all the time to get what they want, which is access and labor and schmegs and all kinds of things without having to do anything. And so this comment is connected to a, a several videos I made when I first found out about the Golden Bachelor because I'm always suspicious of a man whose wife is dead. I always assume that he probably um, unalived her. Not like, like, but more like slowly through her nervous system or through lack of sleep or whatever. Because men are so hard to deal with. If you don't have a man who especially likes you as an individual, not you as a woman who is easily replaceable, like... The Golden Bachelor, apparently, that's his line of thinking. Um, yeah, they are going to, to exploit you to the point of taking years off your life. And that man has a dead wife. So I'm not saying that all men with dead wives, you know, con contributed to her dying early. As somebody who's both my grandmothers died way too early, I always have questions. So the Hollywood Reporter is pfft. At the same time, it's not pfft. Because this is all, this is why women don't want to date men. Even this old dude is doing the same thing that these red pill dudes are. He doesn't like, just, okay, just watch, watch. So as they talk about, this guy has been playing us. This man with this really tragic backstory and he cries about his dead wife all the time. But you know, he's looking for love because everybody deserves love. And he hasn't, you know, met anybody and he just wants to one last shot at love. And he comes across as this like really authentic man, will, you know, willingly listen. Um, he cries all the time. I'm telling you, I don't believe men when they cry. Yes, I also talk about how toxic masculinity makes it so that men can't cry. But when men cry in front of women, over half the time they're doing it is to manipulate her. Gaslight, lie about some BS, and you're like, oh, but he's crying, it must be true. He came off as this wholesome guy and almost preachy in his wholesome bleh. This guy is like if the word G. Willikers became a person. <laughs> that was Lewis Black who made that joke. By the way, for anybody who comes for me, I've worked on reality shows too. I was on a reality show for National Geographic that wasn't about drama and relationships. It was literally about like the survivor brain. So there was no drama, but even in that show, I started to see how these shows are just, ugh. The edit, the producers on, and through editing and, and stuff like that are like literally just create a narrative that's not even true half the time. But even with all this background check, did, did this guy, this makes me think he's a narcissist. And I do not label people narcissists lightly. And you could be really selfish and a complete jerk and not be a narcissist. But this man actually thought he could go on TV, pass all these background checks, FBI, and go on TV and not think that anyone from his hometown would talk about these relationships that he had. Like the audacity. You really think. Nobody's gonna be like, hey, I dated this man. What do you mean? <laughs> and also, y'all, the producers need to do more. Like, what, what, how did you miss this? Or did you just not care? Created this whole image, right? The producers did, because that's what they do. And then The Bachelor just fed into this narrative with all of his little remarks about his wife, his wife, his wife, I miss my wife. Really, dude? Because you dated someone right after she died, which I talk about on here a lot. These men are so afraid of being alone. They're so afraid of like, they're so dead inside that they can't even go a month single after a 43 year marriage. That's why I say do not date men who have just gotten divorced or whose wife just died. These men are just desperate that you are, women are replaceable to them. 
Oh, she died. <laughs> okay, boom, new one. Some of them like move on while their wife is on hospice. Like already has a whole new life set up because they can't be alone. They're so afraid of their own company. Is why I swear to God, every single story I tell always come back to this piece I wrote for Harper's Bazaar. Men have no friends and use women for everything. And we pay the price. Do not date a man who cannot be by himself in peace. That man will ruin your life. Apparently, he's not a retired restaurateur. The dude ordered a, ha a, a drive-in hamburger. <laughs> he's called Mr. Quick. Uh, that he, he, he worked at in high school. He sold it in 1985. He had a lot of jobs since then. He is not like this rich, retired restaurateur. I would not be surprised if his wife was the moneymaker. And, you know, he was just cruising on her income because look how cheap he is. Just wait. So, uh, he has been working since retirement, even though he said he has. Oh, I retired at a young age as a successful. No, you didn't. You're literally installing hot tubs. All this is confirmed by, this isn't just speculation, y'all. This is really good reporting by The Hollywood Reporter. They interviewed people. They talked to the places he used to work at. They saw text messages sent from him to the woman he was dating. He was a maintenance man at this place, which is where he met his girlfriend, who he screwed over. Right after his wife died. Right after. He was 14 years younger than him. Shocker. She had a three-year relationship with him beginning a month after his wife's death. She didn't even like mean to date him. She thought they were friends. They dated for 10 months and then lived together for one year and nine months. Again, doesn't line up with him saying that he'd been alone since his wife died and wanted that one last shot at love because he's been alone this whole time. No, he wasn't. He's screwing over Carolyn, which is not her real name. She's afraid to be on the record, but they talked to her and all her friends. It was all verified by um, this woman, Heather, who knew him and was like, this dude wasn't single. <laughs> uh, okay. Heather, who gave her full name, says he's dated a couple of women and they were like not long-term relationships, but they certainly weren't short-term. The reason why Carolyn came forward is she's kind of humiliated in her community by, by what this man did to her. And she wanted her side of the story told. She also kind of wanted to warn all these women that this dude's a liar. Her friend also confirmed this whole story. Her friend and, and her husband went to football games with The Bachelor and his girlfriend. She can't believe that he doesn't think that no one's going to talk about this. He's got to know that people are paying attention to this show. Like, they're all like, what? Which is why I think this dude must be a narcissist. What kind of audacity is that to think that nobody is going to rat you out, dude? He also used the same lines of these women on the show. He had texted to her. Like, word for word. Damn, I go to bed at night thinking of you. Wake up in the morning thinking of you. This text right here that journalists read themselves three months after his wife died. He's already sending a woman this text. Oh, but you were heartbroken. <laughs> All those tears on The Bachelor are vague. This line right here, I have to have you with my morning coffee. Use that one before too. So she was friends with him at their workplace. And at his retirement party, he's going to go live in this dream house with his wife right before she died. Right after this party, they all found out that his wife died. They were all just like shocked. This was in July. In August, he gets a phone from the dude. She was shocked to even hear from him. He's like, I'm coming down to deal with my wife's estate. Again, it makes me think his wife was the one with the money. I'm going to I'm gonna donate stuff. Blah. Well, when, a, when a man's wife dies, I want you to pay attention to how many women come in and help a man. She went to go help him. He took her to dinner as a thank you. When she looks back on this, she didn't realize he was hitting on her. She's like, I was horrified to realize that I went, I was, went out with a recent widow. When she looks back to the text, she realized that he was hitting on her early on. The text had turned hot and heavy relatively soon. Look at this text he sent her. Often does an old geezer get a beautiful girl. Y'all, stop doing so much for men. Asked her to move in with her right away. Don't do that. And quit her job. Don't do that. She drove to go visit this man every weekend, which is like five hours. Stop doing this. Stop doing this, y'all. He finally moved in with her he just can't be alone. He wouldn't stop pressuring her. He promised her mother he would marry her before she gave up all this stuff to go live with this loser. Again, he pressured her to quit her job. So she found a new one near him, but it's still an hour commute. Look at this. He wanted her to share expenses. 50-50. Like, she had to negotiate how much. He wanted her to pay $1,000 a month and stuff. Go Dutch on all meals. This man listening to Andrew Tate, like, what? Not only is he cheap, he's a clean freak, but insisted that she make the bed before she could... <laughs> 
eat breakfast. And then this is what broke them up. He was embarrassed to be seen with her because she'd gained weight. And then he kicked her out of his house. She fell down the stairs trying to pack to get out. And then he claimed she faked the injury so she could stay longer in the dead of winter. Y'all, she had a walker. Y'all, even the old nice guys are liars and hobosexuals and just as bad as modern men. This did not start with Andrew Tate. This is men.